Hello everybody. We'll kick off in about four minutes. I'm just waiting for the stream quality to improve. You can say hi in chat. <laughs> I'll see if I can say hi in chat also. Okay. Right. We'll just wait for people to join in and uh, start looking at some books. Greetings. Hello, 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 hello. Um, let me know if you can hear me, see me. Hello. How's everybody? Greetings on this Friday evening, Friday night, Friday morning, wherever you are. Hopefully you're going to see some cool books. I know you're going to see some cool books, but hopefully you'll... Uh, have a nice little distraction. I can see you, I can hear you, I can feel you. Mike Bravo. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. Yay! Stream status is good. That's what it's saying anyway. That's always a good sign. So, who do we have? Mike Bravo, hello. Singular Step, greetings. Texticle, I love that name. <laughs> hello. Uh, Miguel Angelo Sanchez Puga, greetings. LLAP, my friend. Mr. Michael Kern, how are you? <laughs> two minutes, two minutes to go. We start going in. Mike Bravo from Houston, Texas. Yeah, where are we all from? Greetings from the west of Ireland. We have Houston, Texas. We have England in the house. I'm sure we have a few scattered all over the, the lovely place. Singular is from Bielefeld? Is it Bielf Bielefeld, Germany? We have Vancouver. Woohoo! Hey, we're, we're global rangers here. Excellent. Well, I hope you're all safe and sound where you are. We live in some crazy, crazy times for sure. And again, the whole point about this uh, live video. I haven't done a live video in a long time is to just kind of reach out, say hi, give people maybe something to have a little chat about. Uh, I know I've been watching way too much news, way too much news. I'm giving myself a little bit of anxiety. Uh, Miguel is from Venezuela. Awesome, beautiful part of the world. Mike is doing good. Fantastic to hear, Mike. Glad to hear it, buddy. It's been too long since we chatted. My apologies. And yeah, family are all good. Thank you very much for asking. Harry from England, hello. Ooh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. I don't know why I'm counting down. It's because the Thunderbird fan in me. Way! Uh, no, go away, you. Go away with your radar. Hello, greetings, everybody, to. Uh, this lovely Friday self-destruct, exactly. <laughs> Hero collector in the house, hello. Um, greetings everybody on this first uh, live cast that I've done in a long time. And first book, look at that shine. Oh look guys, sticker's gone. It's a little bit worse, but it's not a little bit worse for wear, but uh, that sticker. 
I was wondering why people were freaking out about the sticker on like social media. Um, it was a bugger to get off and um, I was tenacious. But anyway, I want a little bit of an interactive. Cosmo, how are you doing? Um, I want a bit of an interactive live cast with you guys today. So light up the chat, say hello. We're all friends and family here, so it's good. Um, so to give you a sneak peek of what we have, we have uh, Designing Starships, USS Voyager and Beyond. We have our Klingon fleet book, uh, Star Trek Starships, Encyclopedia of Star Trek Ships. We have our Shipyards uh, Encyclopedia of Star Trek Ships from 2294 to the future. And we have Designing Starships, The Enterprise and Beyond. More than 30 ships in Extraordinary. Is it Extraordinary or Extraordinary Detail? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it to the chat because I'm not going to do a poll or anything. Who wants to see what book first? This one, Designing Starships, Voyager and Beyond. 2294 to the future. Klingon or Enterprise and beyond. So we have Michael in with Klingon. Klingon gets the first vote. Uh, who else is going to vote here today? And you know what? I came prepared as well. Um, I was doing a little bit of research. Michael Sheehan, hello. Looking for designing Voyager. Ooh, we have a split in the house. Dun, 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 dun. Voyager and beyond. We're kind of going everywhere here. <laughs> Enterprise and beyond. Okay, we have a bit of a split house. So why are you guys and uh, girls, I'm sure there's a few out there as well. Um, while you find beautiful people, fill up the chat in there. Um, let's have a look and see what these guys are. Are they available? What kind of pricing? Now I'm logged into the uh, shop.eaglemoss.com website here on my iPad. So we have our, well we have a Kelvin um, timeline book here, 24.95 pounds is available, says that's a basket. We have our Klingon fleet, 24.95, uh, again available. We have our enterprise book that we have here, 24.95. See the theme here? But look, there's an offer on <laughs> Star Trek Starships uh, Shipyard. Sorry, twenty two uh, ninety four book twenty one twenty four on the UK store, and we have our Voyager one. And I believe, hang on, let me go up to. I think there was, is there an offer on or something? To all superhumans, Happy Mother's Day! Treat mum or and or treat yourself. We won't tell. Buy one get one. 25% uh, off. So there are offers um, on the store as well. And again, we have some nice tips and tricks here. So Michael Kern, don't forget you can save them also to your account uh, in saved items. Exactly. Uh, do the shipyards book uh, feature extra content like designs? Um, we're going to have a look at that singular step. Uh, I'd love the design of Starships book. Don't know if I really need shipyards book. Well, let's go on this journey together. Voyager got one vote, Enterprise got one, Voyager got another vote, Klingon. So I think we're gonna go with the Voyager first. We'll jump to the Klingon, and then we'll have a look at the other um, books. So again, hopefully you can see these guys here in relatively awesome detail. Um, do you know what, will I, will I, won't I? Yeah, you should be good. Okay, cool. So, just to kind of give you a look, I think we're all familiar, well, I'm not going to assume. Most people that come to my channel will be familiar with my Starship reviews. So, with the ships generally come an accompanying magazine, but you can see there is a lot of content in here. Um, there's gonna be a lot of similar content and maybe some surprises as well. So, they all have dust covers, uh, but a nice, nice, simple, uh, simplistic hardcover there, but again, they are hardcover too. So, uh, more than 30 ships in extraordinary detail or extraordinary detail. So, Ben Robinson and Marcus Riley. 
Uh, so the second volume of the series takes you behind the scenes to reveal the thinking and the artwork behind design, the design of dozens of Star Trek starships, from the first doodles to the finished art sent to the model makers. The book, which covers more than 30 ships, including the USS Voyager, Delta Flyer, and the Enterprise J, is packed with original concept art and includes work from legendary artists Sid Mead and Robert McCall. So again, good words, good words. Um, the books are great, but take up space too. Yeah, yeah, you know, again, you're going to have pros and cons. Um, I know myself, my magazines are in the folders, which can be handy to get reference out of, but having the books is a very quick way to uh, check up references and just kind of chill out off an evening as well, especially in these funky times that we're living in. So... Here is the contents here. So Voyager Aero Shuttle, Delta Flyer. We've got Neelix's shuttle, US's Raven, Prometheus, Equinox. We have our Federation Scout ship, the Phoenix, uh, NX uh, Inspection Pod, NX Alpha, Enterprise J, Medusan ship, Gorn, loads, loads. Valdor, one of my favorite, um, Romulan, Craft, the Vaclis, Aeon, Time Ship, Vought Cities. So we have a plethora of um ships here so again voyager and beyond we're looking at here there's nothing like having a book actually in your hands very true danny very true so acknowledgement here and i think you know what when you're getting the magazines and you're seeing the content and like you know fair dues to hero collector ben has a good presence on twitter there's a fantastic Facebook group and you have the likes of people involved in the production. Um, and I'm sure we've gotten very uh, familiar with a lot of the people behind the scenes and customer service as well, which again, do their very best to help us out. Um, there's a huge village that make these. And again, the concept artists and production people getting involved in giving us a little bit behind the scenes as well. So again, fantastic amount of very notable names here. Doug Drexler, John Eves, Alex Yeager, uh, Rob Bonshun, Jim Martin, again, I think we should all know those guys, even uh, uh, John Van Sitters, uh, Risa Kessler as well. So again, it takes a village to make these awesome books for us. So um, yeah, we're going to breeze through these because there's a lot to get through. So we'll have a look at the eye candy. I'm going to let you guys dive in here, but you're going to see a lot of familiar stuff maybe some new stuff and again sometimes you're going to see similar content from the magazines also um here we have our voyager concept you remember the early ones with the uh, kind of awax fin shark fin over here as well always liked rick sternbeck's and uh, detailed concept arts as well it's nice you can always it's nice when you can see um it's nice when you can see a style from a concept artist like you'll know when you see um a jim martin drawing or john eves or rick sternbeck or um you know alex yeager ryan denning would be in the, the kind of latest generation of them as well so that's pretty awesome to see um actually quality paper just fyi guys uh is quite cool actually um so that's awesome let me just check. Stream quality is still good. Sorry, I'm just super nervous about <laughs> the stream quality here. Um, so here we have a, a studio model, very early, just to kind of show concept as well. Um, old school vibes here, old school skill as well. So that's always nice to see. And again, you have a lot of the detailing. Uh, do you know what? I really liked that design of Voyager, actually. Um, Jim Martin awesome uh, concept art here as well so again ships that never were some of these are quite new to me um again defiant esque uh, again oberth type designs here as well which is pretty cool and again you know something like this now is perfect for this time um not this time of the year but for what's going on when you want a distraction and sometimes you might have to be at home um as danny said earlier there's nothing quite like a book oh hey i'm just catching up on chat <laughs> mr howell hello uh oh look at the detail on these 
Uh, so let's pick up a pace here because we got a lot of books to get through. Oh, look at this. We're going super close into the RCS units. So again, underside, mirror, top side. Okay, you have your thruster nozzles, half rounded piping. Man, the detail. Like, but again, you're giving this, this content to model makers or nowadays VFX artists. So you need to have this detail come through. That is absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Very runabout-esque around here as well. So again, uh, Rick Sternbeck drew up a quick sketch of what the Aero Shuttle could look like. And again, he has a nice kind of lore fixer there that the Aero Shuttle was never finished on Voyager. It was just the shell. That's why we never saw it. Uh, but that's cool. I really, I really dig. I really dig that. Now, what's jumping out to me here is sometimes when you get the magazines, you have filler in relation to like filming season two or the costumes off or the locations off. This is straight up ship goodness. So that could be something very appealing for a lot of people. So again. Just bear that in mind. I love this mind dump of uh, drawings here. When you're looking at the iterative design, you're kind of do, you're doing quick quick fire. What shape looks good? Okay, I'm going to bring that to the next one. Maybe take an element from one to another as well. Uh, Ryan Denning is very good at that as well. Again, Delta Flyer. Wasn't it so cool to see the Delta that episode where the Delta Flyer was. Uh, the, the, the race to, to create a ship and Borg technology and stuff like that as well. Awesome. A lot of great content in here, folks. And again, nice to have it all in one volume. Neelix's shuttle. So again, we have some interesting designs here. The Raven. Annika Hansen's family. Who's loving Seven of Nine on Picard? Let me know in the comments below. Arco, how are you? Welcome to the chat. John, how are you doing, buddy? I'm trying to say hello. <laughs> trying to multitask here, which I'm not very good at. Uh, you can ask my missus on that. Prometheus, multi-vector assault mode with, I think, one of the funniest uh, emergency medical hologram uh, programs out there as well. In addition to the doctor, of course. But um, message in the bottle, great episode. Some nice, some nice designs here. I love some of the concepts coming up here as well. The kind of blend and uh, kind of continuation. Some of the anatomy of Voyager definitely in there. It's kind of like a Voyager crossed with the Sovereign class. Like especially when you look at the drive section over here as well. I was never too wowed by the skin of the ship. I would have liked to have a more traditional paneling, but. That's just me. Maybe maybe you feel the same. Hey, Trek Cat Cat, how are you doing? Who caught the latest episode of Star Trek Picard? Ooh, oh. No spoilers, please. <laughs> I'm just going, ooh, yeah, very nice. Equinox, one of my favorite uh, ships from Voyager as well. Um, Doug Drexler. I like this cutaway here. So you can kind of see the somewhat departure of design, you know, trying different things. Very similar to Voyager as well, though. But again, introduced in a, quite a cool way. Federation scout ships, so we're going into movies here and we're looking at some of the fine work of Mr. Johnny's, one of the nicest people that you're going to meet. Um, the docking scene with Data's shuttle and the scout ship. What was that song that they sung? Uh, British, da, do, do, do. I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> not happening, folks. Uh, Phoenix. Oh, man, the Phoenix. Love the Phoenix. I loved how um, John Eves worked in Burt Rutan's feathering um, from the Virgin Galactic ship to plot its trajectory down. But how they incorporate the cells into a ballistic missile as well. And then having magic carpet ride to launch it. Damn, that's good. Uh, NX inspection pod. Gives me, like, you know, you could kind of see something like that in a movie. Like, like let's say they're remade. Remember that movie Inner Space? Where they shrunk down the little vessel and went inside. Went inside Robert Picardo, actually. There you go. 
talk about six degrees of Star Trek separation. Um, but yeah, I always like the tech in Enix in, in Star Trek Enterprise. Lovely detailing on it as well. Looks very purposeful, even though it's a fantastical ship. That is awesome. I love that. And I loved how, again, we're actually, I didn't mean to do it. You had that kind of continuation on to the likes of Virgin Galactic, where you have a mother ship that would bring it up to a certain altitude, it would detach, and then it would be in thin atmosphere so it can get up there and then engage uh, warp flight as well. Obviously, they went very much down the road of the Phoenix when you look at the finished pilot, but still pretty cool lineage. And the fact that it had this kind of launch track as well gives it that very much of a experimental kind of Nevada type vibe to it as well. Again, making fantastical ships in a fantastical series somewhat believable. Speaking of fantastical ships, segue into the J. Universe class ships, side to side, no turbo lifts, side to side beaming, universities, whole communities, spindly goodness. Um, coming to an XL collection near you, <laughs> who's going to be getting the XL Enterprise J when it hits eventually? I think it might be, a, I, I'm hoping that the XL size will really make that shine. Let me have a look at chat here. Uh, hey Steve, um, Define Pathfinder would make a cool concept ship. Yes, it would. Mr. Retro Tech Raf in the house. Evening, my good sir. Again, we talked about the types of uh, design from concept artists, like you're looking at kind of rough sketches here that get the vibe, you know, the Altair class came from this kind of uh, aesthetic as well. Um, again, always got the kind of, like, you know, the whale shark, open mouth, ca catching all that kelp and stuff like that. Um, again, the Altair, there we go. I'm doing all these cool segues and I'm, I haven't planned it. This is my first time getting time to actually flick through these ships uh, as well. Sorry about the glare, I do apologize. But so far, what are we, maybe a little under halfway through this, there's a huge amount of content in here. And I'm just briefly looking at some of the text here and they do go quite deep into why things went the way they were, what they were trying to do. So that's pretty awesome. And again, some nice high quality reses of the concept art. CG and um, in some areas on screen as well. So what, what, what were we saying, folks? I think it was around 25 quid for one of these, 25 sterling. Lucian ship, interesting uh, story behind these, which we went through in the original um, review of this. In 1969, the budget for Star Trek rarely stretched to alien vessels, but when the show was remastered, the Medusan finally got a ship. In all fairness, I must say credit to the people, Mike Okuda and the gang that worked on the remastered version of Star Trek. It's what got me into watching the original series because I started with TNG. And um, not that the original series didn't hook me in, but having that remastered version really kind of helped me dive into it and again fantastic stories in there as well again the Gorn ship uh, which is cool that was actually really well done in the collection too simplistic renders there obviously we're not getting any kind of finished ones but uh, yeah Michael Kuda and Dave Rossi I think worked on that one didn't they uh, yeah yeah there we go cool we're getting a whole plethora of stuff. Oh, they did, they, they, they changed Klingon tech. <laughs> uh, Bird of Prey, yes, the look at the Bird of Prey presented a challenge. So uh, yes, not the first time that uh, Klingons have changed. Oh, well look what we have here. I don't know if you've checked, the one of the last videos I've done has been the XL Katinga, which shows all the lovely glory of the ship. Um, so, so again, we're kind of going into like practical models, movies, we're, we're touching on TV shows here as well. And some nice quotes and content associated with them. I always loved the motion picture as well. Uh, Arco's getting the J, or the XLJ, I think. <laughs> That's cool. Um, so, V'ger, 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 V'ger. 
I've been thinking about V'ger a lot lately because of a certain Star Trek series that I'm watching at the moment. I won't go into it in too much detail, but fantastic, fantastic design, Sid Mead. Again, the biggest ship most people have never seen <laughs> because of that damn power cloud, eh? Uh, fantastic artwork, lovely ballet off the ship just going down and uh, discovering V'ger and, oh, I kind of want to watch that movie again, actually. I know I said that when I was looking at the, reviewing the Katinga Exile, but um, look at this concept art. Come on. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but come on. Scottish Trekkie in the house, how you doing? Thanks for asking about the family, everybody. The family is A-OK, -okay, and I hope you and your loved ones are A-OK -okay as well. Again, stay safe, practice social distancing. Again, embrace technology. Let's get together more often, even though we're supposed to be uh, keeping apart here as well. So this is one of the reasons why I wanted to get you guys in a nice uh, live chat uh scenario as well oh well, that's fantastic again we're just kind of going to flick through these guys just to check them out um just to kind of give you a sense of what's in the magazines maybe it'll tickle your fancy and you might want to pick one up um the medusan ship features in the tos novel the higher frontier cool cool awesome um, so trip inside v'ger so again you have some fantastic matte paintings concept art here as well Ooh, oh, look at that. I'm getting distracted here. <laughs> How's everybody in chat? You doing good? Sebastian, how you doing? Um, oh man, I get so jealous when I look at this art going, God damn, I envy your skills. But listen, everyone can get these skills if you have the time to practice and, and dedicate. But um, you know, the, these are masters at their, at their uh, given jobs as well. But that is, I would love that as a print. Damn, that's good. Um, nice little badge there. <laughs> oh, look, we have a concept bird of prey, or bird of prey, warbird here as well that I think a lot of people desperately want. Um, so Romulan warbird, the big beastie. Um, love the Romulan warbird actually. Great render off the vertical warboard there. So Probert's design, 1987. Are you kidding me? 1987, man. I'm feeling old, feeling old. The Valdor, oh, you put up a good fight, uh, Valdor. Uh, but unfortunately, goddamn, uh, Scimitar was uh, a bit too much. Ooh, look at this, interesting. Did I ever see? I'm not sure if you ever saw that one before. Look at the scale of that in, in comparison to the Sovereign, if you can see it. Let me just check out the chat in case I'm missing anything. David, how you doing? I saw TMP with my parents as a kid and my dad fell asleep during it. Good times. <laughs> um, no, I didn't pick these up at uh, DST, uh, Scottish Trekkie. Um, but we checked out earlier in, in the as we were starting off the live cast. Uh, there's an offer in one of these books online, but they're all available on the UK store and potentially on your regional stores as well. So do check them out. I think I have the store link in the description of the video as well. If I was clever enough, which I often am, and um, to have included that as well. Love the detail work of Johnny's here as well. Some fantastic. He normally puts in little Easter eggs in his designs, especially his concept work, um, as they're going for approval as well, um, aka the, um, oh, the name, the name, what's the, the Breen, the Breen ship has a little Easter egg in it. Um, Romulan Bird of Prey, again, got a little go in Picard as well, so it was nice to see the classic bird um, get reborn. Loved having the graphic on this one here as well, but, um, I know a lot of people didn't like seeing it in um, Enterprise, but listen, it ended up in Enterprise. There you go. <laughs> uh, cargo ships, who's a fan of logistics in Star Trek? Come on, it's nice to see how Starfleet and the colonies get about their days, isn't it? So it's awesome to see these space truckers. 
Um, Trius R, how you doing? Welcome to today's live stream. So ECS Horizon from Enterprise. The Vatless. I, I, do you know what? I'm, I am a sucker for a good um, Vulcan ship, to be honest with you. Who's got the latest XL, the, um, the warp sled? Let me know in the comments below. I've seen some fantastic pictures. I ain't got it, but I'm hearing good things. I'm seeing good things. Loved the story arc, by the way. I know I'm meandering, but I'm, I'm kind of just having a look at what's in front of me here. Of the time ship and how its journey back fed into the IT boom back in the 80s and 90s, 70s, 80s and 90s. I thought that was great arc. Captain Braxton, or Cap Commander Braxton, or something Braxton, anyway, if my memory serves, was uh, the guy. Do you know what? I like that more than the one that we ended up with. Um, do you? What do you think? Vertical Warbird for the win? Definitely. The Serac arrived yesterday. Singular step. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, Federation Hollow Ship, I was always a fan of the original concept, or one of them here. I really like this type, um, which I'm just trying to think. It's That's kind of similar to the... I'm trying to picture the... Was it the Wallenberg class from Picard? You know the kind of warp sleds for the cargo? Did they have an array like that? I can't remember. But I always like this. I Listen, we ended up with this one. I get why as well because again you're talking about maximizing the interior space to replicate the village um in the movie insurrections but it's a box and it's going backwards as well if memory serves <laughs> uh, renegade's ship designing the borg what a departure and man lore you're a sneaky little bugger aren't you pretty cool ship though i love the asymmetry off the renegade ship you don't often see that. Um, you can some you can always fall into s symmetrical design. I say like I'm speaking like an expert here. I am far from being an expert, but I do like asymmetrical ships. Borg sphere, fantastic. Love the detail artwork as well. I love seeing fan art of these. And again, we're, we have seen one of these embedded in the current Borg cube as well. Vat city ship. What a storyline. Humans weren't the first kind of super smart species to evolve on Earth. We haven't heard about them at all since Voyager. Um, but yes, the Vought City ship, a ship uh, designed by dinosaurs. Again, you're looking at scale here between Voyager. Uh, they went with a very different design. Um, but you can kind of see some of the... You know, kind of some of the spindly nature that you would have seen in the um, Rear Universe uh, Charon ship as well. Some of the concept art kind of looks like that as well. Um, again, went very, very clean looking in, in comparison to the original one, but again, a vast mega ship. Um, don't mess with the Voth for sure. Imagine if the Voth were ever assimilated. Uh, research ship, wasn't it Galen? I think was the, the scientist on that one. I could be wrong. Uh, Andorian Battlecruiser. Oh man. The Andorian Battlecruiser. One of my favourite alien ships as well. She's a beauty though, isn't she? Absolute beauty. Great concept art here as well. Again, we're getting into early uh, Federation ships as well. Let me have a look at the... Let me have a look at the chat here. Bot concept looks so much more interesting. Yeah, you know, again... I love when concept arts, artists go crazy, but there's the, the kind of realities of production as well. Um, and again, CG is really helping that, but when you get a lot of producers and people in the mix, um, a lot of voices can sometimes impact uh, what's going on here as well. God damn that light shine. Uh, so, negative space. Interesting to see uh, in uh, this kind of iterative design of early warp capable ships by john eves as well so pretty awesome always love that design actually so we're getting we're getting to see a nice plethora of ships from voyager and beyond Ooh, the animated series the antares again we have michael kuda to tank for this um 
very interesting ship and I think actually quite nicely done this I believe was missing some decals I remember um, on the practical one I think it was like I think it was missing some decals up here but overall it was it was a pretty decent one obviously when you're looking at this versus here um, bit different <laughs> uh but again you're talking about the remastered series as well so again the advantages of uh being able to kind of come back and again would love to see all the series remastered but it takes a lot of money to do stuff like that zindi insectoid ship let me know in the chat what's your favorite zindi species uh insectoid reptilians avians we never saw them unfortunately um do you remember that? Remember the, the kind of amphibian ones? Man, they had a huge ship, didn't they? Uh, and obviously, the, the sphere weapon as well. Again, here you have the reptilian ship. Interesting. Seeing that ship in this render. And again, some cool... So we're kind of gone from the sketch to like CG concept here as well so quite radical designs and again almost kind of um, amphibian looking with that kind of mouth off it as well so reptilians the aquatics there we go i was calling them amphibians there you go uh the intrepid a good vessel yes definitely let me have a look here at the chat one of the concepts for the enduring cruiser looks a bit like prometheus yes it did actually and again the aquatics beautiful ships again building the sphere underwater you little pups will be sneaky very interesting to see like a society i know again it's a fantastical uh, tv series but you know having these distinct species uh though connected um be very different but coming from the same planet as well so again insectoids reptilians aquatics avians and so on and so forth uh, so that's pretty cool so there's a lot there and that's just the first book designing the USS Voyager and beyond from here collector so Michael voted for the Klingon fleet with no sticker <laughs> encyclopedia of Star Trek ships so we're going to crack open this guy this got a little bit damaged on route, but it's A-OK -okay otherwise. Um, Johnny's art book. I, do you know what? Did I do a live? I think I did a live uh, flip through that way back when, last year. Um, so, Star Trek Shipyards, Star Trek Shipyards even, uh, is a series of uh, lavishly illustrated books that provide in-universe profiles of Star Trek ships. Building into the ultimate illustrated encyclopedia of Star Trek vessels. Each ship is profiled with technical information, operational history and plan view CG renders. Wherever possible using original VFX models that were used for the TV shows and movies. So there you go. Again we have another kind of, it's, it's high quality paper as well. So this is the first time I'm opening these guys really properly. So, we're going to be breaking this down into 22nd century, 23rd, 24th. Ooh, we have a size chart there as well. We have acknowledgements for all the people that worked on the show and helped uh, make this uh, issue um, possible. And again, a forward uh, as well. So, I'll let you guys enjoy that when you're reading it. Kapla. Oh, yes. Today is a good day to flip through a book indeed. So, 22nd century. Hopefully you can all see that. Let me just check the stream quality. It's still saying good, so let's go with that, shall we? Anywho, hello if anyone has joined. Um, there will never be a sticker on the book again. No, there will not. <laughs> Do you know? Um, but listen, it, you can kind of see my nail marks there, but listen, it's gone. <laughs> I, I, as I was saying earlier in the stream, I was like, I was wondering why were people commenting so much on uh, the sticker when I posted the picture? But um, I understand why when I started to try and take it off and I just, I couldn't give up. I couldn't, I couldn't give up guys. Anywho, we're here. 
22nd century, Klingons. Um, yeah, do you know what? They got a lot of designs in the 22nd century, didn't they? So again, we're going to breeze through because I didn't show you earlier. Look at the freaking thickness of this book. She's a beastie, which is good. Again, we're probably gonna have a lot of time at home being safe and secure, looking after each other by practicing social distancing. Am I right? Now, I'm trusting that the camera is not gonna move here, so I'm gonna sit down. And uh, if you will, will indulge me, I just need to take a little sip of water. Hopefully, I'm not gonna be slurping in the microphone. Um, thank you very much, Scottish Trekkie. Um, negative space on the Franklin. I think there was some negative space on some of the concepts for the Franklin, yeah. Um, Franklin, that Franklin ship grew on me, to be honest with you. I'm calling it now the most beautiful Klingon design is the one Ease did uh, for Enterprise. Um, there, do, you know, do you know what I like about Klingon designs? And do you know what? Let's, let's talk and flick through the book, shall we? I don't need to kind of dissect everything. It's all here for eye candy. Um, one of the things that I like about Klingon design is there is a defined aesthetic for every era. Like when you look at TOS, obviously that was the genesis of it all. And then when you're looking at the fantastic detailed awesomeness that came into the movies, and then obviously we have like the Vorcha, Negvar, and the, um, the reuse of the Bird of Prey, like the Burrell and so on and so forth. Um, TNG, Deep Space Nine, pretty freaking awesome as well. Uh, but then when you go into Enterprise, there was a plethora of, you know, early types of ships. And again, new classes of ships, but that kind of definitely paid homage as precursors to uh, the design. And I'm gonna talk about it. Yes, Discovery, I am a fan of Discovery. Listen, it's all subjective. I'm not right, I'm not wrong. You like what you like, but I do dig what they did with the Klingon ships in Discovery. I am hope I should hopefully have the D7 uh, next week, um, which I know made a lot of people uh, happy, but a lot of the um, designs for the Klingon ships there's a lot more uh, concept here by the looks, or not concept, but a lot more kind of screen and lore attached to the designs here in this version versus that one there. But, um, you know, um, I do dig what they did with Discovery anyway. But uh, one thing I liked about John Eve's work here is like the, 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 the spars and the reinforcements. And again, the Raptor is, is she, she's a beauty, isn't she? Yes. This now is very much akin to the kind of magazine format isn't it so you're getting your profiles and again there's something nice to have in a bookshelf isn't it to kind of pull from these i love this negative space as well in the d5 so again you're kind of seeing the lineage go up into like the battle cruisers the vorcha as well and again like the exp like klingons they're not going to put er erroneous detailing on ships or paneling they're just they're built purposefully utilitarian ships, but uh, it's all cool. So it's kind of nice to see a lot of the, as you say, the lore, why they were the way they were, tech specs and so on and so forth as well. Again, cargo variants. The Augment ship as well. Augment ship wasn't, not, not super high on my list. Still kind of cool. Very aerodynamic and sleek. Um... Again, kind of like a mixture of a bird of prey and a raptor to a degree, but then you have those kind of spars and a lot of the kind of the feathering detail on them as well. Gorot starship. Yep. We have that in the collection. Decent enough size ship, really, when you think about it. What else do we have here? Destructor cannons, deflector shields, more destructor cannons. <laughs> And yes, Klingons did have transport ships. Logistics of Star Trek, yay! Some nice on-screen images here as well, and then seeing it with, it's nice seeing them with some of the other ships for scale reference as well. But again, look, look at the elements that you're kind of bringing from like the D5 here into the, the cargo ship as well, which is pretty cool. Again, we have our, it's kind of like a 1950s microphone. When you see that, 
Man, Archer really pissed off the Klingons, didn't he? And uh, a size chart. This is nice to have in the magazine, isn't it? Nice to actually see them all together. Bird of Prey was quite a sizable ship. Raptor, very slender and sleek. And you see the, the battle cruiser and the Klingon ship, again, very similar nacelle configurations. Now, look at this. Look at this beauty. <laughs> Discovery Klingons, TNG Klingons. Do you know what? It's quite nice actually to see them together, isn't it? Like when you're looking at the, the, the you know, the, not, I'm not going to say flamboyant nature, but the, the bold red elements on the Nagvar versus some of the red elements on like uh, Kahl's ship. Um, yeah, very Baroque design on Discovery, but nice to see them all in one place. Bird of Prey, very insectoid looking, isn't it? And you, you see your, your Klingon symbol as well when they were on the way, almost on the doorstep of uh, Star Trek, on, off, off the Earth. Uh, Retros needs his bed. Listen, I know it's late. I do apologise. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. Have a good one. Thanks for joining. Um, so you can see the kind of ornate nature of the design as well. So um, Dickinson and Sam Mitchlap worked uh, on a lot of the um, Klingon ships of memory serves. Sarcophaga ship. Lovely model actually from a hero collector. Huge ship. Again, very ornate design. The Vec Larg class, isn't it? Is it Vec Larg? I think so. I'm not too sure. <laughs> um, again, you have your profiles, but no, like, I, you, you're going to, you know where the nacelles are, you know where the bridge is, but Again, some opportunity here to fill in some text uh, on it. Uh, it's one of my favorite Klingon ships as well. Again, I love the, the colors, the gold, the red, the, the, the gun metal grays, the, the points of interest for like the, the dry section and nacelles as well. The attack ship's eight power engines glowed in the flight. Eight power engines, a lot of redundancy. Again, you know, very alien, not everyone's. Um, again, the uh, Ethleth class. So this one I would know from the likes of uh, Star Trek Online as well. So nice to see that kind of design kind of coming in here. I think this was in Star uh, STO, if memory serves. Um, but it's nice to see the Discovery um, ships in here as well, the cleave ship. Man, when I saw this just tear through the Europe, I was like, what a ridiculous ship. Um, but listen, they're Klingons. Of course they're gonna be ridiculous. <laughs> uh, Vortas Burr class. That's a cool ship. I always like the kind of, almost like dragon scales on that ship. And again, they all have their own kind of unique design. Because there was no, like, what was it, the lore was that, like, the families had their own kind of creations as well. So, again, when they all got together, that's where the D7 came out of as well. So, pooling their resources and might together. But there's some mad Klingon ships. Again, speaking of mad ships, Klingon Raider. Cool ship, though. Very hard to display if you're limited on space. Uh, this is pretty cool. I always like this one. Always kind of give me like a Stargate vibe though. Um, I don't know about you. Let me know in the comments. Hey Craig, how are you doing bud? John, how are you keeping? Uh, hello to everybody in the chat. I want to make sure that we're saying hello all the time. Because listen, thanks for taking the time of your day to come by and check out the video. Um, again, uh, Bath, Bath, I, you know what? I'm not going to even try and pronounce half of these names. Uh, encapsulate notion, encapsulates notions of honor. Notions of honor, not just honor, but notions of honor. Interesting design though. Again, very stark difference from some of the other Klingon ships. The Daspu, I have that upstairs. That's gonna be coming to a review near you as well. Daspu provides essential support to Klingon fleets. So it's a support ship. Um, looks it. It's aggressive looking, isn't it? You wouldn't want to like pick that up and throw it at somebody, would you? Caw, the Quaw class. Again, very similar to, what was that other ship called? The, 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 
Sorry now for flipping back here, but where the hell is that? Yeah, they're very, very similar ships. Again, a little bit of difference in detailing. The Quadge class. I think it's a Quadge? I don't know. <laughs> Man, there's a lot of Klingon ships, isn't there? With crazy names. That's a cool looking ship, isn't it? When Carl of House Corps took charge of the Klingon War effort, he seized and shared the cloaking technology. Yes. Made them a formidable foe because they were hiding in the dark, the buggers. Ah, D7 class battlecruiser. Isn't she just lovely? In all fairness, D7. Simple, unmistakable, Klingon badass. Slash Romulan badass. <laughs> Anywho, um, but I was always a sucker for the Katinga. That's just me, though. Um, Bird of Prey, listen, again, iconic, iconic ship. Uh, my favourite, obviously the HMS Bounty. Beyond a doubt, there she is. Wing positions. Landing, attack, flight. I would have always preferred... The landing to be the one for um, attack, but I get why there's again articulating ships. It's always cool, and I always love the the feather detailing on both Romulan and Klingon ships as well. Ah, oh, look, look at look at the look at her. Come on, Katinga all the way. She's a beaut. Who here got the Katinga XL? By the way. Let me know in the comments below. I'm sure there's a bit of a delay here, but let's see how much of a delay there is. Um, Pink Blood. Do you know what? Undiscovered Country. That was a cool movie. And I love the UI as well. We got to see the UI in the motion picture as well, didn't we? When they were shooting off the torpedoes towards Voyager. Oh, Klingons attacking Deep Space Nine as well. I got that on video. That two-parter on video. VHS way back when. So cool. Anywho, another freighter slash transport ship, uh, which again we have cling on here, but we've seen it redressed as well elsewhere. But um, obviously there is that logistical line that needs to support the Klingons, y'all. And again we have civilian transport. Again, it's always cool when you're seeing ships being reused. <laughs> Vorcha, one of my first favorite ships out there. Like again, TNG was the one that brought me in. German Trekkie in the house. Hello, how are you? Greetings. The Klingon Defense Force, Vorcha class. I remember getting, I think it was Playmates, did a lights and sounds version of that. I got it way back when in Dunn stores in Ireland. I also got a Galaxy class Obviously, Enterprise D, which actually is upstairs. My youngest Dax plays with that now, which is pretty cool. As well as my kids play with my Lego too, so that's awesome. Uh, again, iconic ship. That'd be cool in um, an XL. Klingon Transport 2372. That's the bloody... That's that warship. Was that used as a transport? Was that redressed as a transport? That that ship from um, that awesome um, episode in TNG where the galaxy got trapped and it was using like the gravitational pull of the asteroids to flip out. So it was using the energy energy dampers from like a a war that ended hundreds years before. What was the name of that ship? Let me know. My mind is going crazy here, and I don't have a device to Google. And I'm not going to ask Google over there. Stop listening to me. Uh, Nagvar. Love the Nagvar. Beastly ship. Nice to see such a ridiculously massive beast. But of course, go wrong. Would you have it any other way? Permelian Cruiser. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. My mind can rest easy tonight. Yeah, the Nigvar showed up in uh, All Good Things. 
when uh, the Galaxy S came and handed its ass to it. Uh, size chart, so here we go. Look at the size of the freaking uh, Klingon sarcophagus, 2,500 meters. Um, right down to a TNG movie type um, Birds of Prey. Man, so it, like even in comparison to the Negvar, like, yeah, some of the Klingon chips were ridiculously big, weren't they? <laughs> that's crazy. All right, cool. So that's our Klingons. We got two books to go. So I'm going to keep Enterprise to last. So we're going to check out Starfleet, uh, Star Trek Shipyard, Starfleet Chips 2294 to the future. Um, so again, just to show you, this is a big one. Love the Dispo could also make for a scary board ship. It, you know, it could, it could, Arco. Uh, that's a big book. That's a nice coffee table book, by the way. Don't forget it's Mother's Day. Is it Mother's Day in the UK and elsewhere? It's Mother's Day over here in Ireland on Sunday. Uh, so maybe your mom would like one of these books that you can borrow from time to time, who knows? Anywho, greeted by a lovely Delta. So, this is going to be similar to the Klingon ship where we had Voyager and beyond. So we might see a lot of the same craft here, but we should be seeing, again, more lore profiles and so on and so forth. Again, acknowledgements and forward. Um, the SS Raven. Man, those, those, those Hansons were, were, were reckless parents. Come on, we have to call it. They were reckless parents, weren't they? Not gotten the uh, Exile Katinga. You gotta get on that, Arco. Thanks for stopping by, Hero Collector. Awesome, have a good night. Catch you on the flippity flop. Stay safe. Looking, uh, looks like the intro to Hitchhiker's Guide of the Galaxy. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho. Let's check out this. Maybe the next time I'll do a, a live stream, we'll do a little bit earlier. Anywho, USS Raven, N-A-R, 32450. So we're just gonna fly through this here as well, check out what kind of goodies lay inside. So we have our Raven, we have our runabout. The first ship to fly, well, technically not the first ship to fly through the wormhole because we had um, that uh, Bajoran poet he was in the, he was in one of those solar sailors, wasn't he? Uh, and again, we have our mission uh, specific pod runabout. We have our mission scout ship that we saw in the previous book. Again, we're going to see a lot more on screen here. Cool ship though, I always liked it. Kind of a bit of a funky Federation ship when you think about it though. Delta Flyer. I get why ships were reused, but I, 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 I understand as well um, at the same time. Uh, ooh, the Borg Nexus. Um, I always thought the Delta Flyer was a little bit OP, overpowered. And um, I thought the kind of tactical uh, display here was just Tom Paris just being a bit of a douche. Uh, but anyway, yes. <laughs> you heard it here first. Uh, but, you know, I... I it's a cool design, but I just I always thought it was just a little bit OP. But I, I understand there's Borg tech in there as well. Uh, it's very large, really, when you compare it to the um, runabout as well. Never never really saw the two of them side by side. And obviously the Raven with the reckless um, Hansons. Look at all the small craft. So we have the fighters, the academy trainers, and uh, the half of the Jaeger up here as well, the Mackie Raider. <laughs> Again, those guys were a little bit OP as well. But they were good for flying around the Badlands though. And a kind of cool design. Let me just check on the chat here. Uh, only downer is that the rear quarters of the runabout only appeared in TNG. Yes, that's right. Um, Troy, they were having dinner, weren't they? In the back. That's true. Uh, flight training craft. Oh, Crusher. You and Red. Was it? Wasn't it Red Squad? Thought they were smart asses. 
They weren't. And then they tried to cover up their bloody shenanigans, little douchebags. Wasn't it, there wasn't a Cobra emblem that was on this, but then they couldn't get the copyright for it as well. Anyway, I digress. Attack Fighters. Who wanted to see more of these guys in Star Trek Discovery instead of those kind of like Tron bikes that we saw at the end of season two? Excelsior class, what a beauty. So we have, so it seems to be kind of segmented into the, like these small craft. Man, that's a big chunky beast, isn't it really? Multi-mission explorers. Man, there's a plethora of them. Woo! There's a Miss Picard's ship of choice. Lantry, one of about 17 variants. No harm in it, no harm in it. Let me just check stream quality. Still good, we're, we're okay, we're okay. We're doing all right. Are we up to an hour already? <laughs> we're getting there. We gotta pick up our pace here, come on. Oh, Plesky. Banged Riker's dad, didn't she? Uh, fair play to her. The Stargazer. Oh, man. Imagine the missions and stories that were on that ship. Let's flip through these. And yes, the Stargazer was not gold. Enterprise C. Not one of my favorite enterprises, but I know it holds a special place for a lot of people. Uh, if they're done correctly, that is. <laughs> Nebula class, one of my favorite uh, ship kit bash variants. I know it wasn't really a kit bash as well, but um, I love the AWACS, the, the multi-mission pods, and against some of the other varieties that are a bit ludicrous in them as well. Oh yeah, when um, O'Brien's old captain went a little bit crazy heading after uh, the Cardassians, getting up to all sorts of shenanigans. Obviously, the Enterprise, come on. Has to be done. That was the Generations refit, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It was a good, that, was, that, was a good, that was a good job done on that bridge, actually, for the movie. Love the ship. Who thought the ship shouldn't have been destroyed in uh, the movies like it was? Would it, have been, would it have been better to have kept it going for longer? Curious to know. Saratoga. Again, Ben Sisko has a lot of history with the Saratoga. <coughs> we seem to be kind of getting a lot of the magazine content here, which is grand. But, again, it's nice to have it all in one place as well. Like for £25. Or was it, I, think this one, I think this one was actually on offer, wasn't it, for like £21. But there we go. Who's still jonesing for some uh, star bases in the collection as well, like regular? Ah, oh, the Defiant. One of my favorite ships, period. Just a great design. Great little ship. Cheyenne class. A lot of ships in this one, to be honest with you. I thought we had a lot of Klingon ships, but obviously we, of course, it makes sense that we have a lot of uh, Federation ships. Springfield class. Profiles are plenty. These these kit bashes for like the Wolf three five nine and such did um, they, they went they went real crazy, didn't they? Uh, with with you know quad nacelles, two nacelles, and like using highlighters and stuff like that as well. <laughs> no worries, Scottish Trekkie. Thanks for joining. Uh, there would be a, there would be a good gift. You're right, singular for a collector out there that maybe may not have the room for the ships and stuff like that. Maybe they didn't get the fact files at the time and they kind of want to see some of the cool content in here. Again, ridiculous uh, ship, really. But it's kind of cool, though. Um, and nice to see them not smashed up. Not smashed up. But it's all good. Uh, oh, Roller. It's just crazy, though. <laughs> There's our lovely highlighters, the New Orleans class. Again, we're getting some nice lore attached to these, which we would have gotten from the magazines as well. So a lot, a lot of these are brought over. If you have collected the ships, you might be getting a lot of duplication here as well. But again, to each their own. Someone might like just to have the quick reference of it. Equinox, we caught that in the earlier one. And we have the future variant of it as well, the Rhode Island. 
Ooh, it was nice to have the L cars, the master system displays in these as well. The Pasteur. Captain Beverly Picard. Will we see Captain Beverly Picard? I don't think so. Maybe, actually, maybe we could. I don't know, though. Did she ever become a Picard? That was an alternative uh, future, by the way. I always liked this design, actually. And I have Gates Max Fadden's uh, signature on the cover of that as well. <laughs> no worries, Scott Shecky. Have a good evening, buddy. This tug. I much prefer the tug in Discovery than the tug we got here. Like, talk about kit bash. That's just nuts. Voyager. We talked about Voyager in the other magazine. Obviously, we're getting some more on-screen images here. And ship profile. Steam runner. I really liked the uh, first contact fleet, I must admit. Again, very radical designs when you're looking at the steam runner, uh, the Jaeger, uh, the Norway. Here's the Sabre, which is the USS Jaeger. Again, we got some, we got to see these guys in the Dominion War as well, actually. Yeah, I forgot about that. But the Jaeger is such a cool, the, the Sabre class is such a cool design. Fabulous profile um, off the ship. The side view is just absolutely gorgeous. Norway class. Obviously, we have the Akira as well. But the Norway is cool. Like, the Norway is such like a torpedo boat. Doesn't have to get right up close, can just sit there and volley out torpedoes. And again, having the aft shuttle bay, very much like uh, the Reliant. Again, a nice nod to like a Reliant type of uh, vessel, but with a TNG kind of Voyager slash vibe to it. Um, we have our Prometheus, which we talked about before, but we get to see some inside shots here. And our uh, holographic amigos. <clears throat> We take a drink of water. Again, I always wish they kind of did a different type of vibe on the the whole detailing, but that's just me. Centaur class, that was actually pretty cool. You know, um, kit bash for um, an Excelsior style uh, saucer. Again, a very nimble, powerful ship. The Curry, an interesting one. Again, a kit bash. With the uh, Enterprise the Vibe um, nacelles on it as well. You've got to make things different. These are all ships that were shown in bits. <laughs> but um, there are a couple of uh, good variants as well. Like the Mirandas were pretty good. And, you know, so again, the Wolf 359 variants were pretty cool as well. Um, yeah, Arco. Yeah, just literally just think of that. Yeah, the, the, the Miranda variants were pretty cool. Sovereign. Absolute, like, oh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Coming in quantum torpedoes, ramming ships. Just fantastic eye candy. Absolutely fantastic eye candy. Hope we see, hope we see the Enterprise in, um, in Star Trek Picard, even a flashback. We got to see the D, show us the E as well. Come on, has to be done. So here we have a scale chart, which is nice. So we have our fantastically elegant um, Sovereign. We have our Voyager. Uh, surprisingly large uh, Freedom class. And again, some of the chunky monkeys over here as well. Again, very large Niagara. 565, 641. And again, the future. The ridiculously grand Enterprise J. <laughs> So we have some nice graphic shots here as well. Be interesting to see what this looks like hands-on in an Excel form. The USS Relativity, again, Captain Braxton. Gets all over the place, that guy. Time shenanigans. I like a good time episode, but uh, they can get very, they can get very naff very, very quickly. But again, interesting. The Aeon. We've already looked at this ship before. Captain Braxton again. Braxton, you should stay in the future. And the Enterprise J, 3,219 meters, actually longer than the sarcophagus. Look at the scale difference. <laughs> That's mad. And again, we have class listings here as well. So 
Uh, that's cool. I, I, I dig that book. That's awesome. So for you Federation fanboys out there, fan, fanboys and girls, you'll have your Klingon fleet and your um, Starfleet fleet as well. Last book of the day, we have Star Trek Designing Starships, The Enterprises and Beyond. More than 30 ships in extra extraordinary detail. So, let's have a look at this one. So this will be very similar to the first book, again, just with the different content in here as well. Exile Equinox would be a fancy thing to have. That's very true, actually, yeah. That is very true. So Trek Cat 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 has this book. Now these aren't all the books um, that Eagle Moss and Hero Collector do. Um, but let's have a look. So designing the Enterprise. So we went from looking at the lore tech specs and we're going back into the concept world of why things ended up the way they ended up. And it's going from a ring ship to twin A cell, Matt Jeffrey's gold, moving away from spherical uh, hull sections to um, the, oh, why is the name? The, what? Oh, man, my brain is completely shut down. Dish, Di no, what is the saucer? <laughs> saucer section. Man, my brain just let me down bad in, on the live stream. Damn it. <laughs> uh, anywho, some, again, radical designs here. Uh, seeing what's stuck, but uh, the end Nat Jeffries ended up fantastic. Ralph Macquarie's design uh, in 1977 for, again, what was heavily um, accentuated into Star Trek Discovery as well, the, the overall design. I know it's not for everyone, but you know, it was great to see it show up in TNG. Trek Cat Cat Cat, yes, obviously there's a bit of a delay in the live stream, but yeah, you, you, you helped me out with Saucer there. <laughs> Um, again, great artwork. And do you remember the, the teaser trailer for Discovery? That's where it came from. <laughs> it was very quick and... Oh, it was very quick and uh, ready. Uh, here we have the 1977 uh, variant of um, the Enterprise for the TV show that never was um, because they quickly changed to uh, going down the route of... Um, a movie. I'm just looking at a lot of these things. We've seen a lot of these elements in uh, some other ship designs uh, moving forward as well, which is actually pretty cool. The Reefus, one of my favorite, just all time classic ships. Question to the chat, because this was asked of me before, would you go Reefus or Enterprise A? And whatever one you're picking, why would you pick that over the other? Let me know in the chat. Fantastic detail in here for the input section and some of the kind of habitation sections, engineering, cargo, shuttle bay. Pretty cool. Andy Probert working on the Enterprise D. Oh, thanks, Admiral Mo. Uh, Admiral Moo. Thank you very much. Thanks for stopping by and thanks for the kind words. Ship separation. Uh, I th I'm glad they went with the original uh, hull separation, the way it went. Again, the Enterprise C type of uh, variant there is a fabulous ship. I never got my hands on this in the collection, and it's out of stock all the time. I will get it one day. That was always so much better than the Enterprise C that we ended up with, but that's just my opinion. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, thanks, Arco. You're all too kind. Excelsior Enterprise B. I like the Enterprise B, but the Excelsior still wins it for me. But nice to see the Excelsior making its way to a variant for the Enterprise. Um, and I'm sure she went on to have many successful missions, but it just wasn't her best showing. Enterprise E, Sovereign Class, John Eve's beautiful lady. Drexler's NX-01. And John did works for uh, that as well, but Doug ended up taking over and uh, nailing the NX design as well. 
And again, looking at how the influences worked for as well. We could have had a very different ship way back when, but uh, again, the joys of design. Jeffrey's Galileo. We have this lovely shuttle as well from Eagle Moss. Some of the concepts. Again, reason why we don't have that on the TV show was that it was more expensive to make. Again, the reality of production, my friends, doesn't always work out that way. Some George Jetson style uh, vibes here, isn't there? <laughs> Imagine. First TNG shuttles. So Probert's designs as well. Very organic and curvy and beautiful. Speedboat shuttles as well. <laughs> I always liked those shuttles actually from Voyager and TNG. Were we very lucky with shuttles? Uh, let's have a look here. Refit as it's the original Enterprise with all those memories and light years travelled. Uh, the Refit Enterprise was the first hero ship in Trek I ever saw. So it's always going to have my affection. Awesome. And what Sneak for Gaming said. <laughs> <laughs> so Refit is winning versus Enterprise A. That's cool. Yeah, I dig it. I'll dig it. Uh, Reliant Concept which just people are receiving uh, out there as well. Reliance is a fantastic ship too. USS Excelsior. Excelsior had many concepts as well, Nilo Rhodes, uh, which we got a lot, uh, our hands on a lot of them as well in the collection, which is fantastic. Stargazer in beautiful yellow as well. Akira, come on, Akira is, she's a beast. Beautiful design. This is the artwork that always comes to mind when I when I think about the Akira. Absolutely gorgeous. Great renders. That would have made a good Enterprise. Or like that the Akira would have made a great Voyager, actually. The US is Centaur. Look at all that greebly goodness. <laughs> it's the stick and stuff on every inch. <laughs> Look at the chimneys and the gold and brass is like, it's crazy. <laughs> the Fortunate, we're back to logistics here. So we had the Horizon, the Fortunate, Botany Bay, come on. You can't have a book without having the Botany Bay in there. Borg, obviously. Man, the Borg on Picard are looking mighty awesome. Look at this obelisk looking yoke, that's crazy. The size of it. Man, that would be freaky, very, uh, 2001 vibes like this kind of monolith obelisk looking yoke but they really explored all the different shapes didn't they spheres cubes oblongs again the tactical cube was a great design as well and uh, Doug, Doug, Doug did a great job on that but Picard man the Borg look fantastic in Picard Ferengi Marauder wow haven't seen these ships in a while Again, very interesting, very interesting design, the Frankie ships, actually. And the shuttles were quite nice, too. Solar Sailor. Yeah, delicate little shippy, but uh, nice. I think it complements the Bajoran aesthetic very well. Ah, the fake Federation ship. The Dauntless. Um, bu -bu -bu yeah, you're right. Yeah, the Star Trek Armada had a lot of those auxiliary Borecraft for sure. Yeah. Again, well, those, the poor crew getting their hopes up. Krenum, the year of hell part one and two. Man, still want to destroy the uh, Voyager, but I know, man, they're so hard to do. <laughs> Krenum, you know, as I say, I, I mentioned time episodes before and they can get very, uh, you know, bland very quickly. But Year of Hell Part 1 and 2, that Krenner mark, that was fantastic. The Borg drone, again, totally uh, OP when you're looking at um, Enterprise, wasn't it? Just just nuts. The hollow ship, remember? Um, the Romulan drone, I mean. Look at all the, the hollow emitters. Uh, species 8472. I like that story arc. Again, fluidic space. Cool designs. That little bit different as well. Again, organics. 
but um man there's a lot of like a lot going on in fluidic space with organic ships and you know super genetic you know superheroes mail on again we're going back to logistics here aren't we <laughs> the poop carriers listen there's going to be waste in some societies they got to get rid of them Herogen. Again, the hunters of the Delta Quadrant. I like. Do you know? I liked the Herogen. I did. I didn't like the the way it went with like the the hollow, uh, the hollow, uh, hollow deck arc. But that's just me. That's just me. Tholian ships. Yeah, I think Tholian were an underutilized species across all of star trek again i think they're very formidable foes that could take the gas off you know klingons romulans for a little bit um let me have a look at the chat i don't want to be oh i'm moving my camera here i do apologize um how are we getting on fishy foo hello uh professor hello how you doing have you seen the new picard i have seen the new picard no spoilers though maybe not everyone in the chat has <laughs> Uh, man, we're looking at some crazy uh, Vulcan designs here as well. And yes, we have ring ships, shuttles. I think Hero Collector should do a shuttle and a little boat, maybe a ship in a bottle or something like that. The Dakir, again, John Eves. Man, John Eves is like a beast when it comes to like concept art as well. So there you go. We've seen a lot of ships today. Book one. Enterprise and beyond. We have the encyclopedias of Klingon and Starfleet. And we have designing starships Voyager and beyond as well. We got there. That's a lot of book flicking. <laughs> How long are we here? 82 minutes. If you've been here since the beginning, which I know a few people have been, fair play. You're absolutely legends. Um, so listen, I hope this gave you a good distraction on this Friday Eve. Um, go forth, have a fantastic rest of the day or night. Be safe and sound. Look after your friends and family. And uh, listen, um, I'll catch you in the next video. Okay. And uh, if you ever need a distraction, come find me on Twitter or come and check out one of the up and coming videos as well. You've all been absolute bloody beautiful people. Uh, you're more than welcome singular. You're more than welcome textical. I love that name. Craig, you're a gentleman a scholar. Glad that you're here. Everybody, have a fantastic night. And I will see you in the next video. Take it easy. And goodbye. <laughs>